Hello my friends. I'm broadcasting from here on the raggedy edge, a place we all find ourselves a lot closer to than I think we previously, any of us, really thought possible. But that's not what this is about. I'm more prone to despair and doom than most people, having anxiety and being pretty well read on the dystopian fiction front, and also being a human being with a brain and eyes and Twitter. Friendly reminder, Twitter is designed to keep you scrolling. It's not designed with your good mental health in mind. But the world literally needs nothing less than another white guy talking about how terrible everything is. We know we're social animals and we're socially distancing. A lot of us are alone at home, unable or unwilling to go outside more than they have to. And that ain't right. Deep down, for us strange hairless apes, we just don't buy that shit. People are our tribe, by and large. We are who we are because of those around us. And when it's just ourselves, that can get a little bit fuzzy. Now, people have been kind enough to tell me that I have a voice. And occasionally that it's a nice voice, and even sometimes that it's a voice they want to hear more of. And I think humans like stories, too, because stories tell us who we are. Copyright Neil Gaiman. And so I had the frankly genius idea that I could, using my voice, read a story for you. For you, for whoever's listening, and just put it out here on SoundCloud or YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. And I want you to know that I'm here, looking out for you and listening to you, wherever you are. We're not alone just because there's nobody right next to us. So this is what I'm going to do every day or couple of days. I'm going to record a short story in parts if I need to. Try and keep things to 10 or 20 minutes of story time and probably a chunk of blather on the front end like this. And I'll do that for as long as I want or as long as you want, or as long as my voice holds up, and I'll put it up online where you can listen to it for a moment of connection and calm. I'll try and provide thorough content warnings where I can, and you can very fucking much assume there will be bad language. What's up, you cool babies? But I want this to be a broadly positive thing, so anything I read will be something that I've found value or joy in in whatever form. Uh, I'll try not to read anything too uh, depressing or creepy or... Well, there's some Neil Gaiman stuff in there, so assume creepy, but not too depressing. And if there's demand for it, and if a quorum can be reached, I may even pick up a longer book and read a chapter every day. Um, but if you listen to this and you enjoy it, and you want to hear more stories, or different stories, or never hear from that particular author again, or have a specific story in mind you'd like me to read, please do get in touch, or leave a comment. I will most certainly need the fucking ideas. Um, I would most especially love to hear requests for stories that are outside my usual pool of, of reading, which tends towards the quirky end of speculative fiction and fallacious nonsense. I mean, Pratchett, Gaiman, Gibson, they've been formative for me, and, and, and it's a work of Neil Gaiman's, a short one that I'm going to share today. But overall, I still read a balance of white male authors, and I'm shifting that with the likes of M.K. Jemison and Fonda Lee and Octavia Butler, as well as the blessed Ursula K., but that's still all a slice of the world of good literature that I don't venture beyond all that often. So, your recommendations, please. And a disclaimer. Uh, my main reason for doing this is practice. I want to use my voice more, so I have to use it more and tune it more. And the first few of these are going to be rough as fuck, is what I'm saying. So just, you know, bear with me. Uh, the story I'd like to read today is very, very short. And it's by Neil Gaiman. And it's a set of instructions for what you should do if you happen to find yourself trapped in a fairy tale. Instructions by Neil Gaiman Touch the wooden gate in the wall you never saw before. Say please before you open the latch. Go through. Walk down the path. A red metal imp hangs from the green painted front door as a knocker. Do not touch it. It'll bite your fingers. Walk through the house. Take nothing. Eat nothing. However, if any creature tells you that it hungers, feed it. If it tells you that it's dirty, clean it. If it cries out to you that it hurts, and if you can, ease its pain. From the back garden, you'll be able to see the wild wood. The deep well you walk past leads down to Winter's Realm. There's another land at the bottom of it. If you turn around here, you can walk back, safely. You'll lose no face, and I will think no less of you. 
Once through the garden, you'll be in the wood. The trees are old. Eyes peer from the undergrowth. Beneath a twisted oak sits an old woman. She may ask for something. Give it to her. She will point the way to the castle. Inside it are three princesses. Do not trust the youngest. Walk on. In the clearing beyond the castle, the twelve months sit about a fire, warming their feet, exchanging tales. They may do favours for you, if you're polite. You may pick strawberries in December's frost. Trust the wolves, but do not tell them where you're going. The river can be crossed by the ferry. The ferryman will take you. The answer to his question is this. If he hands the oar to his passenger, he will be free to leave the boat. Only tell him this from a safe distance. If an eagle gives you a feather, keep it safe. Remember that giants sleep too soundly, that witches are often betrayed by their appetites. Dragons have one soft spot somewhere, always. Hearts can be well hidden, and you betray them with your tongue. Do not be jealous of your sister. Know that diamonds and roses are as uncomfortable when they tumble from one's lips as toads and frogs. Colder, too, and sharper when they cut. Remember your name. Do not lose hope. What you seek will be found. Trust ghosts. Trust those that you have helped to help you in their turn. Trust dreams. Trust your heart. And trust your story. When you come back, return the way you came. Favours will be returned, debts be repaid. Do not forget your manners. Do not look back. Ride the wise eagle, you shall not fall. Ride the silver fish, you will not drown. Ride the grey wolf, hold tightly to his fur. There is a worm at the heart of the tower. That is why it will not stay. When you reach the little house, the place where your journey started, you will recognize it, although it will seem much smaller than you remember. Walk up the path and through the garden gate you never saw before but once, and then go home, or make a home, or rest.